Hey y'all, it's a cloudy overcast day today. Joe's sister and her daughter are coming over for a visit while they're in the area. So I wanted to make something to have with some coffee. And this recipe is not my own and I didn't find it, <clears throat> discover it on my own, but I saw it on Kathy's Southern Kitchen on Facebook. And um, it came out of a Biltmore House cookbook. And she made it and said it was absolutely delicious. It's easy and I like that. I don't have much time. They'll be here probably in the next hour and a half or, or so. So um, I'm just gonna whip this up real quick. And what makes it easy is you make it with the blueberry muffin mix. <clears throat> and the recipe is called Biltmore House Blueberry and Almond Coffee Cake. So to start with, <clears throat> We're going to preheat the oven to 350 and um, we're going to mix together a cup of sour cream, a half a cup of milk, and two teaspoons of orange zest. Now I'm using this Cara Cara orange I just bought a few days ago from Tony Slaughter Farms, so I had that on hand. So I'm just going to, I've already zested it, and that's about two teaspoons it took. It took about half of that orange to get two teaspoons. And I'm going to pour in the milk and the sour cream. And I've got some sliver of almonds toasting on the stove, so I don't need to forget about those. I just put them in a little bit of butter and put it on medium heat. Let me check on them. Yeah, I took that off. It's beginning to smell, so you know they're um, ready. So I'm just going to stir this up until all the ingredients are blended well together. I decorated a little bit for Christmas this weekend. I don't decorate like I used to, and I don't even put a tree up anymore with it just being me and Joe, and it's a lot of work. So, as we're getting older, we want more stress-free <laughs> things, enough to enjoy the season and put you in the spirit, but not to go all out like we used to. And I'm gonna have to get my whisk do a better job. And it says to uh, mix well and then add the muffin mix and the frozen blueberries. So you use two packages of the blueberry muffin mix. They're seven ounce packages and you get the kind that says just add milk. And this is Martha White. So, I'm going to add the muffin mix and three quarters cup of frozen blueberries. I love easy recipes and I'm so thankful saw this one on Kathy's uh, page on Facebook. If you haven't followed her, Kathy's Southern Kitchen. And she said she was going to start sharing more recipes out of that Biltmore House cookbook. That and the blueberries. You can use fresh or frozen. I had frozen. And we're going to gently stir this in. I have a bigger spatula, but I just use this little mini one to scrape out the orange zest out of the grater. So I'll just use it, it'll work fine. And this is coming together nicely. So 
Stir gently to combine and spread the mixture into a greased nine by nine baking dish and sprinkle the top with the almonds and bake for 35 to 40 minutes until the cake is golden brown. So see how quick this has come together. So I have my square pan here. I buttered it all over inside. I think I got all the flour mixture mixed in there. Looks good. Smells good. Hey, babe. Where do you think from? Nope. The camera is rolling. Say hello to everybody. Howdy! <laughs> Spread this in the pan. Do what? So I'm spreading this batter into this pan. It smells good, hun. I love that smell of the orange zest in with the blueberries and the batter. Normally you use lemon zest, so we'll see how the orange zest, but it's smelling wonderful. I make sourdough um, blueberry, lemon blueberry muffins, and they're really good. I haven't made those in a while. Hands are clean. Get all that off the little spatula. My oven is preheated to 350. So I'm going to put this in there and I'll check it at 30 minutes. Oops. Before I put it in there, I'm getting so excited. I got to put the almonds on top. It's a half a cup of slivered almonds. And like I said, I just put some butter in the skillet and put it on medium heat just to toast them up to bring out the flavor. this goes and when it's done I'll be back with you. While the coffee cake is in the oven I went ahead and mixed up the glaze that goes on top and uh, you're supposed to put it on the cake while it's hot. So in this bowl I have put um, one cup confectioner sugar, two tablespoons of milk, one eighth teaspoon of almond extract, and one teaspoon of orange zest. So that took the rest of the zest that was on that large uh, orange that I had. So you mix all of this together and set it aside. I'll show you what a little bit of decoration I've done here in the kitchen. And um, I love these deer and the trees. I think I got that at Hobby Lobby two or three years ago. And these are my favorite things. These are hand carved Santas that my brother Johnny does. And he's done so many of them for me. When I was selling real estate, he did this one with a sold sign. I retired from real estate in 2017 when Joe's uh, Parkinson started getting a little worse. And he's got these little praying Santas down here. And there's my red bird I bought the other day. And here's the fishing Santas. I used to go fishing with my dad a lot. And these are different. This one, the fish is carved into the wood. And this one, he carved them separately and put them on a string. And this is the dining table. I'll keep it simple over here because when we have people over to eat with us, we have to take the centerpiece and everything off the table. So I didn't want to have to remove a lot of stuff. 
but the main thing is the nativity. And I've had this little one for years, and I really need to get some fresh moss out in the yard and glue, hot glue it back on top of the roof. And I've got a wooden reindeer here, and this Christmas tree, silver Christmas tree, <clears throat> I found at um, Habitat for Humanity a couple of years ago. And it has places in the back where you put candles and can light it. And it's so pretty when it's lit up. They had two of them, and I bought the second one. And I just put it up here at the top of my corner cupboard. Okay, it just came out of the oven. And um, the recipe says to let it bake for 35 to 40 minutes and um, I checked mine at 30 and it was done inside but it wasn't quite as golden brown on top so I let it sit in there for another three minutes and now it's nice and golden brown and the knife comes out clean when I test it so that's about 30 33 minutes that I had it in there so anyway it smells so good and I've got the glaze whipped up here and I'm just going to drizzle that over the cake while it's hot. And that's going to be so good. And you're supposed to let this rest for 10 minutes um, before you serve it. And they texted and said they should be here in another hour and a half, so that's perfect. We'll put on a fresh pot of coffee and enjoy the cake and enjoy the visit. So I'll put the recipe in the description box below this video. Compliments to Kathy at Kathy's uh, Southern Kitchen on her Facebook page. So um, if I think about it, I'll link that or try to link it in the video. But we're going to enjoy our time together with family and hope you have a blessed day. Keep walking in the light. Okay, the cake, the coffee cake was a big hit. It was very delicious. And Linda took some home with her. And, um... We enjoyed Linda and Cindy's visit, didn't we, honey? Yes. So they had to leave for Cindy's doctor's appointment, but they were so sweet and brought me some goodies. Cindy made some peanut brittle and shared with us. Looks really good. And then Linda gave us this little devotional book that Joe's mother had by David Wilkerson. It's a daily devotional book, so we'll enjoy reading through that. And then she gave us a copy of David Wilkerson's book called Dearly Beloved, Words of Hope and Comfort for These Troubled Times. And she said that book really helped her when her mother passed. How long has your mother been gone, honey? What year did she pass? You remember? I don't know. It's been three or four years, maybe. But she was a sweet one. We called her B, and she's one of a kind. We loved her so much. But anyway, we appreciate Linda and Cindy coming by and visiting with us. You think I'm going to throw you a snack? I've got to get all these sticks and briars out of here. You know what? If I come across a good handful, I'll throw it down.
this handful's too too bad. Skipper's going back out. You want to go with her? You only have about another hour to stay outside. Don't you want to go out? I know there's nothing out there to eat, but at least you can get some exercise. Stretch your legs. You're my buddy, aren't you? Trying to get out what I think might be foxtail. See that bloom right there? I've heard through the grapevine that it's showing up in some of the fields here locally. And if horses eat it, it causes blisters in their mouth. So since I'm sorting through to get the briars out anyway, I'm trying to get all of that out too. There's another one. I don't know if that's what it is. I looked it up and according to the picture on the internet it looks like that. And the vet said that she's treated several cases of it in our area so Pretty good back there. Bring this pile over to sort through. So this first pile that I just sorted through is going to be their breakfast feeding, their morning feeding, and I'm going to put it in the back stall and shut the door so they can't get to it. So I researched a little bit more on the internet about the foxtail, and I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. But, where's the seed head? <laughs> Here's a seed head of what I thought might be foxglove. Get it up here where you can see it. Not foxglove, foxtail. <laughs> and it says that when the seed pods dry out, they contain all kinds of little thorn heads in them. So I'm just going through this seed pod that I don't feel any kind of thorn heads at all in it. So I don't think this is foxtail. 
but where the hay was cut late, it's probably Timothy or something, and it's gone to seed, and the stem is just like a stick. So I'm taking them out just to be on the safe side. Now this one might be a little better. It's a little bigger for you to see. So it looks like a foxtail, doesn't it? I'm going to go through this seed pod. There's no thorns in this at all. No thorns. So that makes me feel much better. Well, I'm down in the barn this morning. It's 27 degrees. And um, Joe just hates for me to have to come out here when it's so cold. Since I've taken over the horse duty, <laughs> I feed him morning and night. So I tell him not to feel bad because... When I'm down here, I'm in my element. I just love being in the barn with the horses, hearing them chew on their grain and their hay, and the skippers over here. She's already eating her grain, I think. No, she's still chewing on it. So I'm getting ready to get them some hay. And I've got their morning feed in the back stall back here shut up so they couldn't get to my snot. So first thing I've got to do though is muck the barn hall. So let me do that. So it looks like they still have plenty of water. And um, some of you may wonder, why do I take the pains and time of sorting through this hay that, that we use round bales? But it's got so many briars in it. I don't want to take a chance on it piercing their tongue or the roof of their mouth. That happened to Nico one year, and his tongue swelled up really big. So I don't want to go through that again. But, um, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs... Uh, that a righteous man careth for his animals and says that the um, kindness of a wicked person at best is cruelty. So, you know, God made the animals and he put man in charge of them to have domain over them. And um, he cares for the sparrows and he knows when just a sparrow falls, he knows it. And he cares for them and he provides for them and he expects us to care for our animals so um, I love them and um, when I'm down here it's just so peaceful and uh, I've had them since I got my first horse in 96 their mama and then um, like I said before Skipper I was foaled from her in 19 99 and Nico in 2003 so I've had them a long time 
<laughs> and for an old gal that don't have any children of her own, they're my children. And I've got a little cat that stays here at the barn, and she's already out. She's out going hunting. <laughs> little Mercy that showed up here. So if God brings us animals along, we take care of them. And you should too. Be good to your animals. And um, Genesis 127, I think, is the right verse that says that God created man in his own image. In his image, he created them both male and female. That's a good verse for everyone to know in this day and time. So, um, and then he made all the animals and he gave man domain over the animals. So, take care of your animals. It's good, isn't it, buddy? After going through a cold night, that hay's good. Skipper. Enjoying your breakfast, too, aren't you, baby girl? So, yep. It's been so rainy here the last few days, and they roll in the mud. <clears throat> so, it's supposed to warm up today and tomorrow, so I'll get them brushed out. Just listen to that munching sound. This is Little Mercy Girl. Let's go get your feed this morning. Come on. You're spoiled rotten, you know it. You're spoiled rotten. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good morning.